Hello everyone and welcome to today's program. My name is Shane Holsgrove, uh, founder and lead pastor of Grace Life Ministries. And our desire is to help you grow in your revelation of Jesus. Because we know that as you grow in a revelation of Jesus, it's going to cause you to experience a fruitfulness in your life. Uh, an effortless, fruitful, effortless fruitfulness as well. You know, so many people are striving in the Christian life, striving to try and uh, bear fruit, to be good Christians, to, to bring God glory. And uh, if we think about it, uh, that's not really the right approach. And I focused on this a couple of times in different programs. Um, but it's important for us to see that fruit is effortless. Yeah, you know, Jesus speaks about the I am the vine and you are the branches. You know what he's saying? Is that because we're connected to him, his life flows through us and brings fruitfulness. And so the fruitfulness that we experience is because of Christ in us, our hope of glory. And that's what Christianity is. It's God dwelling in man for eternity. You know, the moment you said yes to Jesus, you became one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. You became one with him. He came to dwell in you for eternity. Think about that. As a believer, because of who you are in Christ and because of who Christ is in you, you are able to easily hear the voice of God. You know, last week we, we were looking a little bit at uh, relationship with God and how we can enjoy and should enjoy an intimate relationship with God. This is one of the greatest benefits of salvation is relationship with God, but being able to hear His voice. As a believer, you can and you do hear the voice of God. So today in this program, I want to help you to discern the voice of God in your life. Because let's, let's uh, face it, let, let's be honest. If we can learn to discern and know the voice of God in our lives, it can help us make good decisions and save us a lot of trouble. I sit with a lot of people who um, need to make decisions. They're trying to make decisions in their life and they don't know what to do. Or people who've made bad decisions or people who are trying to make decisions or whatever the case is. And you know what? With, with all of them, I say this it's a very similar thing. Life is as simple as hearing from God and doing what He says. But here's the problem. It's not so simple as to how to hear from God. <laughs> the, the good news is God is always speaking, but we are not always listening. And so we need to learn to tune in to God and hear what He's saying to us. And there's some things that we've got to note with this because you can get into a lot of craziness with this. And I've had people tell me, God told me this, God told me that, and it was off the wall and it definitely wasn't God and as soon as they told me that I could tell them this is not God leading you in this you need to be careful and uh, some people heeded my advice and were saved from a, a calamity and some people didn't and had a lot of problems point that I'm trying to make is that we we need to really take advantage of this amazing part of salvation being able to not only speak to God but hear God speak to us. You know, there can be no intimate relationship without conversation. And your Heavenly Father wants to converse with you. Not just listen to your prayer list, not just uh, 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 listen to your shopping list, <laughs> your wish list, but He wants to hear what's on your heart and He wants to share with you what's on His heart. You know, as easy as it is for us to speak to God, the average Christian has a hard time hearing uh, uh, God's voice. And I can understand that, but it's not the way that God intended for it to be. Now, we must never assume that we hear His voice perfectly every time, because then if something happens, we can easily be like, oh, but I thought God said, and you know, we should never get into that place of blaming God because He's perfect and we're not. And so if things don't work out right, I would rather say, well, I missed it somewhere. Amen? But we need to learn to distinguish God's voice and discern His voice because this is something that will 
uh, bless our lives and enrich our walk with Him immensely. Instead of going through life blindly, we can know the wisdom of God because He's speaking to our hearts. We can know His protection. You know, there, 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 there isn't a single person listening to my voice right now who couldn't use a word from God right now. You can, you, you, one word from God can change everything, change your life completely. And yet, a lot of Christians don't live like this. They might believe, you know, I, 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 I talk to God, I pray and whatever. God wants to talk to you as well. God wants to converse with you as well. You, know, you might be having a marriage uh, problem at the moment. You might be having an issue with one of your children. Maybe you're facing a health challenge. Maybe, you know, your, your work is, is, is not really all that great or you don't have any. And you might be facing some challenge. Or, and in that challenge, in that difficult circumstance, you know, we often are like, God, please help. God, please help. And we're going at it and trying to do what we can do. And it's good. We mustn't be lazy. But here's the thing. We need to know that, realize that God wants to speak to us in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our trials, and lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. He wants to give you direction. He wants to give you encouragement in your journey. Sometimes he might not give you the answer to make all your problems and challenges disappear. He might actually just tell you, keep going. Endure. Because sometimes there's an enduring of hardships that's on, that is necessary. It's not Him who's making the hardships for us. It's not Him who wills us to go through the hardships. Be, you know, uh, because uh, life will bring hardships. But the point is, is that we need to overcome those hardships. Yeah, your life might not be all that bad at the moment. Things might be going quite well. Praise God. That's awesome. In the midst of that, God wants to speak to you. When last did you just become still and quiet and go, God, what's on your heart for me? Maybe God wants to direct you to even greener pastures. Maybe he wants to give you a word for someone that you know. Maybe he wants to uh, uh, cause you to, you know, he, he's like, you know what, I've blessed you with, 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 with good business and I'm wanting you to sow, give finances into to such and such a, a, a ministry where they're reaching the unreached or whatever the case is. Maybe God's wanting to give you some wisdom for your business that you weren't thinking of. You, you, you know, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> God knows what we don't know. And He wants to tell us what we need to know. So we need to make time and cultivate a practice of hearing His voice. Hearing His voice is foundational and fundamentally important in uh, uh, fulfilling our purpose and calling uh, 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 in walking with him amen you know and here's here's some really great news because i've heard some a lot of teaching on hearing god's voice and some people will be like you know sometimes god is hiding <laughs> you know he's hiding or he's just being silent yeah there was a period of history where we call it the silent uh, 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 i can't remember exactly what the terminology is but silent years you know, the, 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 the time frame between Malachi and, and, and um, uh, Matthew. You know, the, the, the start of the Gospels. God's not silent anymore. <laughs> and He's not hiding. He's revealed Himself, in fact, through His Son. And He's revealing Himself through the, the, the Word. And He wants to reveal Himself through the Spirit. So God's not hiding. He's not being silent. He's constantly speaking to you and giving you direction. And if you're not hearing what he's got to say to you, it's not him, it's you. Now there's no condemnation for, for you in, in, in missing it. But you should feel bad if you keep missing it. <laughs> because we need to be growing in our relationship with him and growing in our hearing his voice so that we are maybe not making perfect decisions, but we're growing to the place where we can make good and perfect decisions. God is not keeping himself from you. He's wanting to uh, uh, fellowship with you through this life, walk with you. you know? And you've got to make sure God doesn't, his will for you isn't that you go, God, what do you want me to do with my life? And then he tells you and it's like, then you get your marching orders and it's like, yay, I'm going for it. This is what God wants me to do. 
God is not a, just a taskmaster. He's not just giving you a to-do list. He's your father. Okay? You might be surprised that if you do this exercise of just like, God, what are you saying to me? Some, you know, usually the first thing people feel is God saying, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm with you. Just simple things like that. And a lot of people are like, how can that be God? <laughs> How can it not be God? No, it was just me. Are you usually that nice to yourself? <laughs> Most people aren't. You know, the point is, is that God wants to have relationship with you, not just give you instructions. We do get instructions and we can get instructions. And those instructions are not, we, a lot of people fall into this trap, of, of um, ma you know, making their relationship with God about getting instructions so that their business can succeed, so they can have money. Do you know that God's not interested in you making money? Do you know that God isn't really interested in, 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 in prospering your business? I know that someone's just fallen off of their chair. <laughs> if the person who you're watching with, your spouse or something, has gone into cardiac arrest, just put your hand on them and say, in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. <laughs> you know, the, the point is, is that we think that we have a very self-centered approach to Christianity. We think that God is all about wanting us to be rich and prosperous and, and, uh, and comfortable. You know that God is more interested in reaching the lost, in reaching the unbelievers around the world. You know that a third of the world's population don't know a Christian. They've never, they've never seen a church. A third of the world's population are unreached, which means that less than 2% of the, 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 that, uh, um, uh, the, those countries that are unreached in the 1040 window, uh, we call it, they, they don't, they, they, they're not saved. They don't know God. Less than 2%. Many of us don't know what that's like because we live in countries where there's a lot of Christians and you're spoiled for, church, uh, for choice with regards to church. And because of all of this, and then, you know, we, we make a, a listening to messages about uh, uh, that, that blessed me or that didn't bless me. Or, you know, that really gave me some great tools and that didn't or whatever the case is. I want to challenge you not to just look at what a message gives you for your comfort or your blessing. But let messages sometimes challenge you so that you can grow or be a blessing to other people. Now, let me get back to this point. <laughs> God wants your business to prosper. I believe that. He wants you to make money. But He's more interested in you seeking first the kingdom and living for Him. He's more interested in you knowing His love, receiving His love and overflowing in His love so that other people will come to know His love. God never just pours out His love and blessing on someone so that they can enjoy it. We are blessed to be a blessing. And so we need to stop being uh, uh, self-centered in our approach to Christianity. And we need to start becoming more and more uh, 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 focused in on the King and His kingdom. Matthew 6.33 Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. Your needs shall be added unto you. You know, we need to prioritize the king and his kingdom. Even in our relationship with Him in terms of hearing His voice. We don't just seek God to get a word from God with regards to what school should we send our kids to. Although that's a good thing to seek God about. Amen? But that shouldn't be the sum total of what we're asking God in prayer. The word of direction that we're asking God for. Maybe you, you should, you should be, be, be spending time in the morning praying and going, God, you know, I've got many things I need wisdom from you on. But I want to ask you to give me a word of encouragement for someone and lead me, show me who I can visit today or who I can send a message to or who I can phone that I can share the gospel with. Give me opportunities, Father, for me to be able to seek first your kingdom by reaching people. That, 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 that's really... You know, I can imagine the Father doing somersaults and cartwheels and, and ja dancing for joy because, you know, uh, 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 we, we're catching His heart for the world. And we're not just interested in 
prospering for prosperity's sake. And let's look at John chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Because in this passage, Jesus makes some radical uh, uh, statements about hearing his voice. And I just want to touch on a couple of things here. But he says, um, so he, he, he's speaking about himself, okay, as a shepherd of, of sheep. And, uh, and that he is the only way to enter the sheepfold. And he says, to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he puts us forth, his own sheep uh, goes forth before him. And the sheep follow him and they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow. But will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. You know, we see here in verse 3 especially it says his sheep hear his voice. It doesn't say that his sheep can or will or should hear his voice. His sheep hear his voice. You, as a sheep of Jesus, hear his voice. You do hear his voice. You might not know it. You might not be discerning it. You might not be recognizing it. But you do. Most Christians, you know, this isn't their experience. But this is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus says. We shouldn't argue with it. Okay, you know, it's like this. Um, in your room right now, wherever you are, you've got uh, television and radio signals flying through that room. And you might not, you might have a television set plugged in right now and you might be picking up the GBS signal to watch this program right now. Um, you might not, ha but, but, you know, whilst you're tuned into this program, you're not receiving a, a, a different program's a, a communication or transmission point is if i have a, a radio now i can plug it in and tune it in and pick up a variety of radio stations because somewhere someone is sending a message sending a, a, a signal a radio signal and tv signals and on this side i'm not hearing them i'm not listening to them i'm not watching them why because i'm not plugged in i'm not tuned in I'm not receiving the message. Many Christians are like this. They're pleading with God in prayer. They're wanting answers from God. They want God to, to send them uh, uh, messages and all that type of stuff. But they're not listening. They're not discerning. They're not receiving what He's wanting to say to them. You know, it's about receiving. The receiving. Because God is switched on. God is flowing. We're not. Okay. Yeah, this, this, this takes time. This takes effort. This takes focus. If you think about just how, how, what time, effort, and focus it's taking for you right now to, to, to watch this program or to listen to this program. Yeah, you have to uh, 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 prioritize 28 minutes or so to sit and listen to this message or watch this message. It's an effort. You could be doing something else. But you've chosen to do this right now, so you've chosen to focus on this to the exclusion of something else. With God, hearing God's voice, we are so often so busy. You're, the average person's life is so busy that we're not really geared up towards hearing what God wants to say to us. You know, ask somebody, how are you doing? Most people, what do they say? I'm very busy. I'm, I'm, I'm running around like a headless chicken. <laughs> you know, why? Because uh, 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 life is just full. And, you know, we, we do what we do. We, we, pro we do what we prioritize. And so, you know, if it's important to us to hear God's voice, we need to take time, effort, and focus to prioritize hearing from Him. Because the fact that we don't hear from Him just shows we're too busy. You know, Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. It's in the stillness, not the busyness. It's in the stillness that we can tune in our spiritual ears to know what God is saying to us. Now, yeah, in, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, we, we have a great uh, account here, and I want to read it to us. And... and um, here you've got the, 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 an account of, of God kind of speaking, God revealing himself. And it says, he, he, and he said, go forth and stand in the mountain before the Lord. 
And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent, tore the mountains, and broke it into pieces, and the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And, the wind were, and, 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 and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the, 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 fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You know, sometimes we're expecting God to speak to us in dramatic ways, like writing on the wall, or a big earthquake, or a fire, or an audible voice, or an angelic visitation. And, you know, this verse is showing us that very often it's a still, small voice. And that still, small voice is often drowned out by the busyness of our lives. You know, maybe, I, I just feel really strong on my heart right now that that somebody's watching and you 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 had a word from god you know god spoke to you you stepped out in that you started doing what it was that that you felt the lord leading you to do okay and it's not working out and you know it's not going the way that you would imagine it should go and i just feel like god's just inviting you to just sit at his feet and invite him to speak to you about that situation. So often we're doing the right thing, but we've missed something because we stopped listening to God and we started getting leaning into our own wisdom instead of leaning into His wisdom. This is a walk with God. We're not just you're getting instructions and, and walking for God. We're walking with God. So take some time to get a word from God for your situation. Yeah. Another important thing that we need to um, uh, know just with regards to hearing God's voice is that, you know, it, he, he, he often is speaking to our hearts, to our spirits in the form of like an idea, an impression on our hearts, a still small voice, something that isn't audible, something that's really just gentle, a gentle impression. You know, if you want, like, the, 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 the more I find, the more accurate those feelings are, is the result, the, the, those, those um, impressions on my heart and those leadings of the Lord become more and more and more accurate the more I'm filling myself with His Word. When I know His Word, it's easier to discern His heart. So, I want to encourage you, spend time in the Word, rightly dividing, studying the Word, to come to know what His heart is, so that when you hear something, when you have an impression, you know, this must be God, this mustn't be God. Okay? Just a couple of, uh, of safety and wisdom things in, in hearing from God's, uh, uh, hearing God's voice is, you know, whatever God says to you, He's never going to contradict His Word. And this, you know, if the body of Christ, especially in Africa, if we were to uh, uh, follow this principle, a lot of ministries would shut down. Let's be honest. Galatians 1.8 from the easy to read version says, We told you the true good news message. So anyone who tells you a different message should be condemned. Even if it's one of us or even an angel from heaven. So Paul's writing and he's saying, hey, an angel, somebody else might come and share a message with you. And if it's different from the gospel that I preached, let them be condemned. It's not from God. So you might have <laughs> you know, a man of God, an angel. He might even call himself angel. Okay? <laughs> you know, and he might be, be preaching some, some, some very enticing messages. But if it's not in harmony with the gospel... It's wrong. Okay. How does this fit in with, with hearing God's voice? If you hear something that contradicts the written word, it's wrong. Yeah, so some people would be like, you know, I felt God say, uh, uh, when I had an angel appear to me and, and he gave me a new book of the Bible. No, not going to happen. You know, God, uh, an angel told me that you know, uh, um, Jesus uh, uh, is coming back tomorrow or Jesus wants me to, to kill someone or uh, no, not, not, that's, that's contradicting the word of God. It's wrong. What you hear and feel God speaking to you will never contradict a principle in his word. Because God never, will, can never go against a principle that he has established. Okay. 
Now, in order to operate in safety with regards to hearing his voice, I mean, I've, I've seen some interesting things. I had someone come to me and say that they felt uh, uh, God was calling them to purchase a, a, a property, which was probably a couple million South African rands. And um, I don't remember how much it was. And they wanted to open up a, a Christian coffee shop and a this and a that and a whatever. And um, yeah, so they were, were more informing me about this. But I, I took it as if they're going to tell me, ask me for counsel too. So they asked me to actually pray with them so that the money would come through. But uh, before I prayed with them, I said to them, tell me, what have you done for God up until now? You know, fairly new believer. Single mother, not really done anything, hasn't even gone on a mission trip, never led someone to the Lord, never discipled someone. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely trusting God for their needs to be met and walking with the Lord and had great, great relationship with the Lord. But they're in, <laughs> they're in a place where they, um, uh, uh, how do I say this? They, they're just um, uh, uh, trying to go um, from lifting 10 kilograms maximum, 10 kilograms, 10, 10 pounds, let's say. They're trying to lift 10 pounds and they're jumping from 10 to 100 pounds. Because you know? now they're trusting for this massive amount of money. And I said, you know, you've never done anything. You haven't even served in church before. God's not going to call you to do something big when you haven't, got, like you haven't grown in capacity to be able to do that. So they checked it out with me as their pastor. or They, they were asking me to pray with them and I counseled them to not do this. You know what they did? They did it. They went and they signed for it and the, the money didn't come in and they were angry with God and they were embarrassed and, and they had to eat some humble pie and, and hide for a bit. But the point is, is that don't, don't run off with every inclination that you have and every feeling. We grow in this. So start with the small things and let it grow. And as you feel things on your heart, you know, make sure that it, it checks in with the Word of God and, and check it in with a, a mature Christian friend or a good Christian leader and ask them, I feel this on my heart. What do you think? Please pray with me about this. You know, the, the Bible shows us as well that you know, uh, we should do good to those of the household of faith and we should, we should do good to those uh, while today is today. We should encourage those. So if you have a word of encouragement for someone, you don't have to go and check it out with your pastor, phone that person and encourage them. Send them a text message, whatever. But if you're feeling like God's telling you to leave your job and move to another country or go into full-time ministry or something, check it out with a few people. That would be the wisdom of God for you. Because you, you know, um, let, me, let me read this verse. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 4, it says, to be compassionate shepherds who tenderly care for the flock and feed them well. You have the responsibility to guide, protect, and oversee. Yeah. Leaders are not meant to be tyrants or controlling, but we're meant to guide, protect, and oversee. And as a leader, if you were to come to me, I would, I would encourage you in hearing God's voice, but I would also caution you if I felt like this might not be God, but we would pray about it together. So, you know, we, we can have such an adventure in hearing God's voice and walking with the Lord and enjoying His direction, enjoying intimacy with Him, seeing, you know, sometimes you'll need encouragement and if you can hear God's voice, you will get that encouragement from Him directly. He won't have to send a messenger because He, he knows you can hear His voice. And then sometimes you know, God will give you a word of direction or uh, 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 can try and lead you in a direction because you're sensitive to His voice. You're prioritizing hearing His voice. Hearing His voice is such an amazing benefit to being a believer. But remember, He is your Father. He's not your director. <laughs> He's your Father. And He wants to guide you like a good Father would. Amen? Hearing His voice is made perfect. So, so easy because of the salvation truths that Christianity is being one with God, is being filled with His presence, being filled with His love, filled with His power. And Christianity is about us being destined.